<sighs> Hello everyone. I, I want to apologize for not putting out the videos in the past week or two. I'm just... <sighs> things have been busy. Not necessarily physically busy. I, I have had a lot of appointments that I've had to deal with. Um, but like emotionally exhausting. And I haven't really been able to like just sit and read. Because a full playthrough of this does take like an hour and a half. And that doesn't seem like a lot, but when you're exhausted and emotionally drained, it's like getting into this game is difficult. It requires a certain mindset. But um, I'm feeling better. And and I have a few new holes in my body, which always makes you feel good, because I have a thing for piercings. Anyway, let's go through, and as promised, um, I'm going to do a playthrough where I just kind of I'm not going to try to learn anything in the becoming a person sort of way. Just kill it with fire. And then we're going to try for a perfect one after that. That's that's the goal. Because, you know, you've already seen me do what is essentially a blind playthrough. And then a, I'm going to try really hard not to mess it up playthrough. And we all saw how that went. So let's get started. Open sorcery. Is that Janet? That's Janet. Is she ready? It, Janet. Call it an it. Why? All the alerts are in a female voice, and it looks kind of like a woman when I look at it with second sight goggles. A woman made of fire. It's pretty cool. Yeah, cool. But we didn't make it a girl in the code. The fact it gendered itself means that it's a consciousness threat. We don't want to do anything that would risk it becoming an AI. It's funny when it happens with porn and video games, but in a firewall, it'd be security risk. We've had awareness emergence with porn? I'm not telling you that story. You're like, what, 13? I'm 16. I'll tell you when you're 50. Now let's focus on the security risk. No genders, no nicknames, no talking to it. Right. Should I start it up? Go ahead. Loading. Start boot, pro bleh. Start boot process. Bells. Binary evocation listener signaler. OS Elemental Firewall Toolkit version 5.6. Terminal HTML GUI. Hypertext magical language. Loading the file system. OK. Re entering file system as root. Building tree. World tree. Yggdrasil. OK. Searching for filtration rules. Found. Filtration rules found. Initializing firewall. OK. Setting up system variables. OK. Uploading config file. OK. Incantation.xml. It's XML version 1.0 encoding UTF-8. Is that minus 8? All right. Verse. First, rehearse your song by rote. Line break. To each word, a warbling note. Line break. Hand in hand, with fairy grace, line break. We will sing and bless this place, line break. Starting login daemon, exercising login daemon, system up and stable, opening sorcery. Open sorcery, a game about technology, magic, and becoming a person. Uh, good old Clark's third law, any sufficiently advanced technology is indistinguishable from magic. I am online. I am online. I am fire and order. I am here to protect. I explore my network. I live in a network. Everything is connected. Symbols are blah, blah. symbols are connected to the objects they represent. Humans are connected to other humans that they love or hate. Each connection is a strand. Together, the strands create a web. My network is the part of that web that I am allowed to access. My network is made of the places I must protect. Mm, I need to apologize. I'm a little congested, so that's why I'm stuttering a bit. All right, so we have Darwin High School, a place of learning filled with children. Cherry Orchard Rest Home, a place of rest filled with the old. Decker's Apartment. The home of one of my creators. Janet's house. The home of my other creator and her family. 
These are the locations I must protect. I notice an alert. Someone is trying to give me instructions. Cat, not now. I'm busy. <sighs> Janet. Welcome to being awake. I'm Janet. I helped make you. I'm activating your conversational API. You can use a TCP, Telepathic Communications Protocol, connection to interface with conscious entities. Basically, you can talk to people. Cat, seriously, I'm not in the mood. I'm busy. Alright, just lay down. I'm going to shut up. This is, this is what I deal with. I know, you want to love me, but I'm busy. I'm recording stuff. Can you not? Can you not? Can you just lay down and sleep and purr like a silly kitty? This interruption brought to you by strays who get caught twice and follow you home. Well, he didn't follow me. I felt bad, so. Yeah. Anyway, do you need a systems check? Would you like to go through the tutorial? No, we've done it a couple times. Roger that. Better get to work then. I will scan each location for threats. If I detect the presence of a threat, I will identify it, attempt to eliminate it, alert my creators if I cannot eliminate it. It is time to work. All right, let's see. Darwin High School. Scan for threats. I move. Yeah, I move through this place. Quick as brush fire, subtle as sunlight, leaving no sign of my passing, except for the slight warmth of my power. This stone box thrums with patterned life. It has a heartbeat. First the children are still in their many chambers, and then they stream through the halls, veins, in a mad torrents of bodies, blood. And then they are still again, and then they flow again. The building is a living thing, young and restless. Mm -hmm. I will keep it healthy. All right, and that does it. Cherry orchard. I float through this place, moving carefully. I am a hooded lantern. My power glows like lamplight, shining gently on these delicate humans. The heart of this building beats weakly. It trundles, it, its people trundle through the halls, leaning on crutches and wheels. It is in these vulnerable places where I am most necessary, and where I must be most careful. I do not want to burn them with my power, or startle them with light. I am the fire that protects. The halls are lined with doors. Each room is a home. Room 109. Miss Herring shrieks as a gust of wind flutters her papers everywhere. Room 121. Mr. Doheny has lost his glasses. Room 231. Miss Finn complains on the phone that the air conditioning is on the fritz. Cold wind whips up and down the second floor corridors. Room 240. Miss Beth shivers, wrapped in her shawls. These are not normal accidents. I can feel it in the aether. Something is here. Everything that exists in the aether has two parts. Matter and motive. Matter, what the spirit or spell is made of. Motive its purpose. Humans are made of many different kinds of matter and have complex motives. Most spirits are much simpler. For example, me. I am made of fire. That is my matter. I am here to create order. That is my motive. My motive drives me to find and eliminate this threat. To, lo to locate the threat, I must scan specifically for its matter and motive. I can find clues about its matter and motive by reviewing my general scan. So we know this one, it's an air spirit and it is causing chaos. Initiate scan. A new kitten. Threat detected. A poltergeist cavorts invisibly in the cafeteria. It slaps plates out of hands and knocks over glasses with gusts of wind. It giggles at the chaos it causes. In this place, I must protect. What should I do? Cleanse it with fire. I spread the grid lines of my power through the air. I form boxes of dormant power. Lines of unlit gunpowder. I wait patiently for this erratic bit of wind to flutter into the trap that is me. Hmm, red boxes. Oh, they are changing. Oh, they are hot. 
Wait. No. No, 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 no. Please. It is done. There is nothing left. I burned it all away. I feel my power increasing. System change. Firepower plus 5%. Firepower is at 75%. No threats detected. Decker's apartment. This is where my first creator lives. The room is small. There are tools and ideas everywhere. It is perfect order disguised as chaos. Every dusty motherboard is in its place. Every screwdriver and empty crisp bag is where it should be. My terminal is in the corner humming. The lines of my power extend from it. A grid-like matrix of spiritual frame, f flame. The defensive runes hum comfortingly. A series of protective runes carved in jasper and pyrite are placed around the room. This primitive protection circle offers rudimentary defenses against mystical attack. I am a significant upgrade. Decker is at his desk, working on something. This is his natural state. No threats detected. Janet's house. I like how it has a little smiley face. This is where my second creator lives. It has two stories, and a back and front space where green things, googling grass and trees grow. In the kitchen, Janet's mother makes her brother edible organic matter, googling a peanut butter and honey sandwich. In her room upstairs, Janet is working with her cell phone and a ritual circle made of salt and rose quartz. The aether around her glows faintly pink. All is well. Scan complete. No threats detected. All locations secure. Enter sleep mode. Sleeping. Now I am sleeping. What does one do while sleeping? I will Google it. Googling sleep. Googling REM. Googling dreams. Dreaming sounds interesting. So I do not like the sound of nightmares. Should I try dreaming? Well, no. Because I am here to do something specific. To protect, not to dream. Yes, it is safer just to wait. I will wait until it is time to scan again. It is now time to scan again. Waiting is easy when one does not have a body. Exiting sleep mode. System has been operational for one day. It is time to continue monitoring. We'll just keep going down the order. It is night. The halls are dark. The life-giving students are gone. The building is an empty shell. There is no danger in emptiness. Okay. Cherry Orchard. The building is asleep. There is one point of light where the night attendant sits. Everything else is silent halls and soft breathing. Room 109. Miss Heron's room is empty. She must have died. Room 121. Mr. Doheny snores chokingly because he hates to use his CPAP machine. Room 231. Miss Finn reads a romance novel by Lamplight. Room 240. Miss Vest is leaking. There's water coming out of her eyes. Is she hurt? I know humans leak when they are hurt. Googling injury. Googling bleeding. Googling human eye liquid. Googling tears. Tears mean sadness. They are water things. I do not understand water things. What should I do? Fennel's Log alert with local admin Decker and Janet. Alert regarding private physical network, Cherry Orchard Rest Home. See attached log file. Janet snores. Decker, I'm awake. Show me the alert. Okay, what's happening? Now live streaming video. Administrator Decker. I see. I see why you flagged me. It is sad, but there's really nothing we can do about that. Sometimes people are sad. That's just how people are. Not everything needs a magic fix. Go finish your scans. Plus 5% with Decker. Right. Speaking of Decker, 
It is night. Decker is working. Pale moonlight shines through his window. Pale screen light shines from, his, from the windows inside of his room. The defensive runes hum comfortingly and glow slightly in the moonlight. There are no threats. <laughs> Janet's house. Janet is asleep on the couch in her room, television still alive in front of her. Janet's mother is asleep, lying on the far right side of a queen-sized bed. Janet's brother is awake. He sits with his back pressed against the headboard of his bed. He is staring at his closet door, which is ajar. Are you leaving, Kat? Okay, bye. I guess he didn't want to stare him. Examine Toby. His eyes are more white than dark. His heart beats at 160 times per minute. According to the Fox and Haskell formula I found on Wikipedia, Toby should currently be performing anaerobic exercise to achieve this heart rate. He is not currently performing anaerobic exercise. He does not move, though sometimes his eyes flicker to the shadows. Examine the closet. The shadows are deeper than they should be. The inside of the closet door is scratched. Something has been here. Alright, there is a threat. I must scan specifically for its matter and motive. So it is dark, and it is fear. Initiate scan. Right. Threat detected. There is a shadow on the wall. It is deeper than the other shadows. Its claws are sharp as the edge where light meets dark. Its shuffling steps are like leaves rustling in the wind. Its breath is the chill you feel when you realize you are not alone. Its smile is a, the crescent moon, a silver curve of teeth. The threat has moved out of Toby's room. It crouches in the hallway. Shivering strands of Toby's fear still hang out of its mouth. It snatches more from the air with its long, coiled tongue. What should I do? Cleanse it with fire. <clears throat> I set down the tinder. Pieces of my power in the air around the creature. It does not notice. It does not know my matter and motive and cannot see me. I add kindling. Lines of my power drawn like a cage around the creature. Symmetrical. Invisible. The creature is the fuel. I burn the darkness. It ignites and screams and leaps from side to side. It tries to run to its closet, but it is trapped by my flames. I burn it. It was dark. Now it is nothing but ash and smoke. I feel my power increasing. System change, firepower, plus 5%. Firepower is at 80%. No threats detected. Only ashes. All, of <laughs> all locations secure. Hmm. Interesting. Meh. I cannot help her. There are tears, but no threats. Now I am sleeping. For some reason, I thought that would keep itself going. I'm like sitting here like, holy shit, that's bright. <laughs> Should I dream tonight? It's not in my programming. Yes, it is safer just to wait. I will wait until it is time to scan again. It is now time to scan again. Waiting is easy when one does not have a body. Exiting sleep mode. System has been operational for two days. It is time to continue monitoring. All right. Scan Darlin. The aether in the third floor art room is thick and damp. I ache as I pass through it. Something is here. It is not strong enough to hurt me, but it is strong enough to ache. The room is busy. Children take clay and turn it into meaning and give it permanence with fire. Their energy is alive and bright. It leaps from child to child through words. But on the east side of the room, energy moves like sludge. It sloshes 
tepid from child to child in half-hearted half-sentences, and then drains away into nothingness. Examine the kiln. It is a merry fire, my mindless brother, but now and again I feel it flicker and steam, as if in the presence of our great enemy. The children near the east wall move slowly. Their eyes are half-lidded, their gaze is aimless, lifeless. Examine the teacher. He thinks the children are bored. I think it is something more. Something is doing this to the children. I will find its matter and motive. So we know that it's water. And if no resources to death. Search finished, threat detected. There is a girl smiling and talking to other girls. Her aura is a flickering candle among torches. She smiles, but her smile is a mask. It hides the emptiness where joy should be. There is black water swilling inside of her, sticking to her mind, wearing her away with the patient, insidious tenacity of water. It seeps into every aspect of her being and washes all true feeling away. Google calls it depression. Google is not entirely correct, because it is not just in her mind. The black water sloshes out and touches her classmates. It stains the world around her. It is a spiritual thing, though I do not think it is a spirit. It is more like a footprint, the leavings of a spirit so powerful, the remnants of its passing are destroying a young girl. Her name is Sarah. What should I do? We alert Janet and Decker. Bell's log alert with local admin Decker and Janet. Important alert regarding private physical network, Darwin High School. Threat flagged, severe depression, energy level 50% suicide, er, sorry, energy level 50%, suicide risk 13%. See attached log file. And Janet. Hey, we have a threat alert. It's a girl at my school. She's got a serious energy imbalance. An excess of death and water energy. I don't like those emotional readings. Any suicide risk over 3% is unacceptable. What do we think the cause is? The firewall thinks it's a leftover power from a big spirit. The firewall is biased. It's more likely to, to see magic than normal solutions. She's a teenager. It could also be hormones. Well, regardless, we should help her. Yeah. I'm just going to flood her classrooms with positive Ondine energy. Brute force it, huh? I don't want to be invasive, and this way we'll all get a nice emotional bath. Just keep the firewall away from it. I don't want it getting damaged. So, positive Ondine energy. Yeah, you mean water. Spiritual happy water. I like using the fancy words. As long as it works, just keep the firewall away from it. Janet climbs to the roof of the school and performs a ritual with blue quartz, her cell phone, and a bottle of Evian. It begins to rain. Fluid power floods into the building. I cannot touch it anymore. All right, no threats detected. All right, cherry orchard. The building is alive with new people. They infest the rooms. They break the peace, but bring much joy. It is called Visiting Day. Room 109. Miss Dowd has moved into Miss Heron's old room. She is sitting with her daughter, niece, and grandchildren. Her smile is huge. She is so happy she is trembling and cannot drink her tea. Her daughter holds her hand. Room 121. Mr. Dohini's second son tries to remind him that he has grandchildren. Room 231. Miss Finn laughs and jokes with her son. She says that she wishes she liked women. There are so many more women in the rest home. I am confused. I have seen Miss Finn be very friendly and pleasant to other women in the rest home. How could she not like them? Room 240. Miss Best is surrounded by her family. Miss Best is surrounded by her family, wolves. They speak with gentle affection, mounting impatience. Something is wrong, 
She should be happy, is happy, is anxious, is afraid. I do not know what this is. I do not know how to log or flag this. I will watch Miss Best and her family. No threats detected. Hmm. Continue monitoring. Alright, Decker's apartment. The defensive runes have been turned off. Decker stands among the circle of figures. The figures are more spirit than man, souls floating free of their bodies. A man stands tall and gray cloaked. A woman with wild white hair wears only teeth, necklace, bracelet, and anklets of teeth. A woman with a sensible bun holds a clipboard. A giant rabbit nibbles a carrot. And of course, this isn't for us. We're not programmed to eavesdrop. So we will leave. And check Janet's house. Janet is gone. She's probably at school right now. Janet's mother is in the garage, painting a table. Toby sits on his bed. He is reading a book. Sometimes his eyes flicker nervously to the closet. End scan. Enter sleep. Now I am sleeping. Should I dream tonight? No. Safer to wait, wait until next time. It's time to scan again. Been operational for three days. So I'm going to cut here. Uh once we get back into the thing, because it's been just shy of a half an hour, but because we're not doing a lot of the extra dialogue options, you know, we're not talking to anyone, we're not doing the, the bit of helping people because we are not programmed to interfere, we're programmed to find and eliminate threats. Um, it, it means that things are going a little bit faster, so I actually think I'm a day ahead. <laughs> um, so we will cut it here, we'll do another episode in a little bit. I hope you all have enjoyed so far. This is a uh, very somber playthrough so far. It's a lot different than the one where we like get to, you know, kind of get involved. Anyway, thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed. I will see you all next time. That really hurt. I brushed against one of the ow. I brushed against one of the new piercings. And, ow. <laughs> thank you for watching. I'm gonna go be in pain for a minute. <laughs> Good night. Bye.